when we look at sources of uh, government uh, revenue taxation is the main source of revenue for a government and taxation could be both direct taxes and indirect taxes direct taxes is basically one which is levied on the incomes of individuals and firms and may include taxes on you know inheritance uh, taxes on uh, income or corporations tax and so on on the other hand when we look at indirect taxes indirect taxes is the one which is levied on goods and services or expenditure on goods and services they are therefore uh, like for example sales tax uh, or for example value added tax which is uh, sort of levied on people's expenditure whenever they buy goods and services another important distinction to understand is when we look at indirect taxes indirect taxes can be also what we call flat or specific tax which is uh, a tax that is uh, of an amount which doesn't vary with the quantity or it could be an ad valorem tax which is placed as a percentage tax on a good or service for example vat or vat might be set at for example 20% so ad volume tax is simply a percentage tax while a flat tax could be an amount let's say five dollars so a flat tax because it's an amount tax uh, it results in our supply curve to shift backward by the same amount we learned this when we were doing taxes that when you look at your impact of a tax it results in supply curve to shift backward so let's say if this is my supply curve before and if I am putting a tax of five dollars supply curve will shift backward from S0 to S1 where the distance between the two supply curves will be the amount of the tax which is going to be five dollars so this distance here uh, which we look at from this distance A to B this is the amount of the tax if the price for example was seven dollars with a tax of for example five dollar which is this distance a b of five dollar my new price p1 let's call it p naught will become seven plus five or twelve dollars so this vertical distance between the two supply curves will be basically uh, the same distance and that's why supply curve will shift backward in a parallel manner on the other hand when we look at ad valorem tax and we're looking at the shift of the supply curve we will see the shift to be non-parallel because now it's a percentage tax so for example when the price was ten dollars and you're putting 20 percent tax so something which is for ten dollars will now become expensive by you know like 20 percent more which means by two dollar more or new price will be for example twelve dollar but if the price was twenty dollars the impact of the tax will be more so this distance here will be more because twenty will become now twenty four which means the tax amount will be four dollar when the price was uh, twenty and it will make it twenty four the idea goes this that the higher the value the higher will be the tax and that's why there's a non parallel shift that will take place. So when we look at taxes, taxes, indirect taxes can be flat or ad valorem. But let's go back to our direct taxes because when we look at direct taxes, there is another category that we need to look at. Direct taxes can be basically progressive. It can also be proportional or it can be what we say regressive in nature. In the case of a progressive tax, what happens is this, that as people incomes rises, a higher proportion of the increase is taken in tax. Uh, in this case, the marginal rate of tax increases. The marginal means extra rate of tax will go up. In other words, as the income go up, the tax rate also go up. Uh, in many countries, the proportion of income taken in tax rises when the income goes above certain levels or thresholds. For example, income tax might might start at 20% and then increases at 30% uh, and then 40% and 50% uh, and keeps on going up as income level rises. So when the income rises and the tax rate also rises, we call this as a progressive tax. So on the other hand, when we look at regressive taxes, regressive taxes are kind of opposite of uh, progressive taxes where as people's income rises, a lower proportion of the increase is taken in tax. So in this case, the marginal rate of tax, the extra tax rate 
uh, as your income go up will fall a good example of a regressive tax is the tax which is on indirect goods if you look at uh, let's say an indirect uh, tax of five dollars which uh, people pay it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor no matter whether your income go up or down you pay the same amount of tax which would mean that even though your income may go up and your tax amount doesn't increase this means uh, or tax rate doesn't increase this means the tax is regressive in nature finally when we look at proportional taxes so proportional taxes takes the same proportion of person income whatever the level these taxes have what we call a constant marginal rate of uh, taxes in other words the tax rate does not change when income changes so when we look at uh, progressive taxes progressive taxes have an increasing marginal rate of tax while regressive tax have a decreasing marginal rate of tax and when we look at proportional taxes they have a constant marginal rate of tax there are four main reasons why government may want to put taxes uh, the first reason is simply because the government wants to raise revenue to help finance its own expenditure we saw earlier the government can run into budget deficit and tax revenue plays an important role in making sure they do not have these deficits which can lead to national debt when it comes to uh, policy making the government can manage aggregate demand through taxes we can see that if there is inflation happening in a society or economy taxation can result in making the aggregate demand to fall because higher taxes can lead to lower disposable income which in turn can cause aggregate demand to fall similarly taxes could be good when it comes to distribution of income and wealth taxes are basically designed in many countries to make sure that they result in what we call equal distribution of wealth by progressive taxes the government can achieve the goals of equality in a society through taxes lastly the government can also manage market failure or environmental targets through taxes by by taxing the firm that is polluting the government can make sure that the market failure can be reduced let's now look at government expenditure or government spending when we look at government spending there are two types of government spending one is what we call capital expenditure and another one is what we call current expenditure capital expenditure or what we call gross fixed capital formation are the terms used for government investment this is the spending by the government on goods and services intended to create future benefits such as you know what we call infrastructure investment in transport such as road building health and education such as you know new hospitals or schools or any you know sewage systems or even research spending like on defense or you know vaccinations or space sort of programs by the government now when we look at this kind of expenditure we say this kind of expenditure is very important because it can result in our uh, productive potential to go up uh, we can call this uh, policy to result in higher standard of uh, living for the future as ppc can shift to the right because government is investing on infrastructure on health and education and research spending on the other hand when we look at current expenditure this is the expenditure which is government consumption expenditure on goods and services for current use to directly satisfy the individual or collective needs of the members of the community for example the wages of the pu public sector employees or road maintenance and all that will be current expenditure in other words this is expenditure that does not result in investment for the future but it is used for the current use or current consumption now let's look into what we call reasons for government spending government spend money for many different reasons including to you know supply goods and services that the private sector would fail to do such as uh, public goods like uh, defense or merit goods such as hospitals and schools and even welfare pay payments and benefits such as unemployment benefits and disability benefits that only the government can pay Another important aspect of government spending is to achieve what we call supply side uh, improvements in the macro economy such as spending on education uh, training um, and uh, other aspects that can improve labor productivity 
Thirdly, the government spending can also be to reduce what we call negative externalities such as uh, pollution and even, you know, like any other negative aspects of uh, consumption. Another key government expenditure is to help redistribute what we call income and achieve more equity in a society. This is done to the welfare payments that the government make uh, from time to time in terms of unemployment benefits or other welfare payments. Um, Government may also spend money in terms of subsidizing industries which may need financial support like for example agriculture sector in many countries is subsidized because poor farmers may not get good prices and therefore subsidies can help in protecting their income. And uh, lastly, we can say that government expenditure could also be used in terms of managing aggregate demand. So, for example, if economy is slowing down and economic activity is declining, the government expenditure uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, creating more jobs can result in the AD curve to shift to the right and in turn can result in economic activity to go up and in economy to come out of recession even. So we can understand that government expenditure is crucial when it comes to an economy's uh, well-being and therefore this government expenditure is financed through taxation which is also crucial in terms of uh, uh, supporting the economy and making sure the function of the economy operate properly. Hey there, if you like what you saw right now, head over to altacademy.org for access to content around six subjects with past papers, videos, revision guides, flashcards, and academic support. All of this is gonna make sure that you're completely set for your A-levels. So I'll see you there on the platform.